So as we get closer to December's release of the new Dragonlance material for Dungeons and Dragons, I'm just more and more convinced that 40 years of Dragonlance is going goodbye. Let's talk about that today here in the Geek Corner. So hey everyone, it's Rev Kev. Pray you're having an amazing day today. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel here today. And uh, I would like to start off talking about this article here that dropped yesterday. This is on uh, Polygon.com, talking about Dungeons and & Dragons and the big release that's coming out in December of the new Dragonlance uh, material that's coming out for the 5th edition of D&D. Now, I've said before here on my channel, I haven't played Dungeons & Dragons in a long, long, long time. Um, but I was a big Dragonlance fan, and big Dragonlance uh, fan in Advanced Dungeons & Dragons way back in the day. So, so I've been following this story pretty closely as maybe as a possibility of getting back into playing Dungeons & Dragons on Kryn. And so here we got the title here of D&D's Dragonlance Reboot takes its inspiration from Saving Private Ryan in 1917. So, really want to be focusing on the war side of Dragonlance, which is cool enough, because war was a big part of Dragonlance, obviously. And so here it talks about all the heroes we know and love are out there, but it's a big world, and there's a huge world-spanning war going on. And then it kind of just talks about the different material coming out and kind of the inspiration that's been going on here. Uh, won't read the whole article here. You can check that out uh, on polygon.com. Um, but it's basically talking about how it seems like it wants to be kind of grander scale, bigger scale, you know, with war and your characters really at the forefront of driving the story here. And talks about how there's two components. There's the, a campaign book that comes out for storytelling, and then there's a board game called Warriors of Kryn, which comes out as well. And it says the board game comes as a set of miniatures uh, to represent the characters that can also be used on a standard D&D grid, um, including a towering Knights of Salamia modeled after the Dream of Tarth, whatever that means. <laughs> Uh, rather than a conventional ward game, focus on moving units around the map. Warriors of Kryn will maintain the D&D focus with players having different abilities based on their character class. I thought they were getting rid of abilities based on character class. Oh, class, not race. You can't have any penalties based on race anymore um, from what I've been reading in here. So all the races are identical. <laughs> Supposedly. I don't know. I haven't read it yet. Um, but here's, again, what this thing, this article talked about. I mean, first and foremost, like they're, they're flat out calling it here <laughs> a reboot. Not just simply a relaunching of, of Dragonlance, but a reboot. And if you've read, and I won't spoil it here, but if you have read Dragon of Deceit, um, I mean, this isn't a spoiler because it's been in all the promos of this and it's in the inside cover description. It's a time travel trilogy. Um, and the main character, Destina Rosethorn, has the ability to alter time significantly. That's the story. And so now you've got this story that's being written. Um which allows time travel with changing the history in a big way. Um, we also have the little logo up here, there of the new Dragonlance logo where it says classic. I'm absolutely convinced this is going the route of Star Wars Legends where all the previous Dragonlance books, like my collection over here, any republished books are gonna come out with this new classic banner. That's coming, I'm sure of it. <laughs> and. Um, and everything new is going to be coming out, which is based on this game, uh, based on the setting that they're now creating, uh, focusing on the, the War of the Lance. But it's not going to be the traditional Heroes of the Lance. You will be able to be the Hero of the Lance, and you will be able to control the fate of Kren. Again, I don't have any problem with that as a game. That's not a problem at all. But if they're going to go and revamp and reboot and scrap 40 years of storytelling, that always bothers me. And 
I know some people automatically are going to say, well, Kev, you're just, uh, you're overreacting. You're, you're just being a hater. Well, again, it's got this little blurb in here, here, kind of, you know, key enemies include the priest of Tachesis, you know, who leads her forces from the back of a red dragon. The iconic death knight, Lord Soth is coming back, uh, but now he rides a death dragon. So it's a new type of undead dragon. So that's new. And it says the game also brings back the Draconians. Draconians a huge part of Dragonlance. So they're humanoids. Listen to this. Look, look what it says right here. Humanoids born from the stolen eggs, traditionally considered good guys. So the metallic dragons. So in War Dragonlance, you had the good dragons that were gold, bronze, silver, brass. And then you had the... So the, the metallic dragons have been corrupted by Tachesis, traditionally considered the bad guys, the chromic, uh, chromatic jet dragons. Those were ones, the red, the white, the blue, um, the black dragons, just kind of colors. Why did I say this? Traditionally considered the good guys. Traditionally considered the bad guy. That just gives me the EBGBs like there's no tomorrow here of just altering everything and changing everything and uh, just makes me want to groan and then it's got the links in here where you can now pre-order you know and so I was kind of clicking on this and checking this out and again I mean the art's beautiful everything looks really nice and there's a little part of me that's tempted to get the game because it's Dragonlance but then I was looking at this, the miniatures that are part of this game. So here you got the dwarf character. Like, this is like something out of like Warhammer 40k. Like, this is like, like completely unwieldy. Like, you can't walk in, in something like this. <laughs> like, like there's like no space in between the knees and the legs and the giant shoulder pad. Like, like, like this is like Space Marine kind of stuff. I've never been a big fan of Space Marines in Warhammer 40, uh, 40k for this reason. Um, you know, you got your, your Kender character. So they're making Kender too tall. There's, in my mind, they're always like tiny, tiny, tiny. Um, here you got your, your knight of Salamnia. Um, I don't think he's got a mustache. I think he's missing his very important mustache there. <laughs> uh, but this is the one that kills me. So here you got this elf character. And, uh, I don't think I can zoom in on here, but, uh, He's a cyborg. He's got a cyborg leg and arm. Cyborg. Anyways, that, uh, and then you have another thief. You got your magic user. And then you got your board game, Warriors of Kryn. So, yeah, this, this one, this one, this one, this one with this cybernetic leg um that's not dragon lance that that's something else so anyway so again as more and more stuff is coming out about this um reboot um the more this is really giving me the ebgbs and you know again people say well kev you're a hater you're a hater but you know what i'm not a hater because i love dragon lance i absolutely love it and that's why i've started recollecting the books that's why I started recollecting the comics, because there are so many great Dragonlance stories out there. If you don't like what this new stuff is doing, man, then just get involved with some of the old stuff. Grab a copy of, you can find copies of AD&Ds. There's a lot of the material, like I'm finding it on eBay, finding it in secondhand bookstores, thrift stores. It comes up. It is easily to, easy to find. You might have to pay a little bit for it, but at 200 bucks for the Warriors of Kryn game, I can get a bunch of the modules and I can get the AD&D books for the exact same price. So you're not out any extra money of uh, trying to have some fun by kicking it old school. <laughs> so anyways, that's the video. Again, this uh, relaunch slash reboot slash scrapping everything Dragonlance. <sighs> Just seems to be happening. Just seems to be happening. And... Uh, I mean, they've done it with Forgotten Realms. They've now done it with Spelljammer. And it looks like it's time for Dragonlance to get the big old battle axe taken to it. So we'll see. 
I'd love to know what you think about this reboot down in the comment section below. And as always, I hugely appreciate everyone who is a part of the channel here. All of your support is just hugely appreciated. And until the next video, God bless you. And we'll talk to you again real soon. Take care, everybody.